I've heard there's an update available for the Samsung S22 Ultra. But first, I've got a bit of a problem. You see, I've got loads of smartphones in this studio. They are literally everywhere. And I don't know where I've put the S22 Ultra. Phew, I was worried for a minute then. Um, right, I wonder if it's got any charge. No, totally dead. Right, let's get it charging. While that's charging, the reason I'm making this video is because Samsung has recently issued an update for the S22 Ultra. Now, since I've had this phone, there's been about 4 million updates for it, and none of them have fixed the issues with the terrible Exynos chip. Now, if you weren't aware, if you buy an S22 Ultra in the UK, it is absolute garbage. And the reason for that is really simple. It doesn't come with the Snapdragon chip that most other regions get. We get the Exynos chip, which is Samsung's own chip. It's just terrible. It's slow, it's sluggish, it jitters. It's just an awful smartphone experience. And more importantly, it's not good enough for a phone that is this expensive. But according to my podcast co-host Rob and Alex Gear and Tech, who has a fantastic YouTube channel, the latest update for this phone has pretty much fixed those issues. This has really intrigued me. I need to see it for myself. So I'm going to take this with me now on a trip to Amsterdam because why not? So I feel like I should explain why this phone annoys me so much, and it's actually quite straightforward. It's a brilliant phone ruined by a terrible chip. And just to reiterate, you don't get that issue if you don't live in the UK and certain other regions. But for whatever reason, Samsung gives us in the UK the Exynos chip. Brilliant. So I updated the phone last night. It's now on version 4.1 of One UI. Interestingly, the version that Rob used is the beta version, which is version five. But then I've heard from Alex Gear and Tech that the current public version is stable as well. First impressions, it's better. I think the bigger question is with this update, is it worth buying an S22 Ultra now? So I have brought it with me to Amsterdam on a little trip for something else. And let's see how it really performs. The other reason it's worth talking about this phone at the moment is because of the competition. Now we can put the iPhone 14 Pro Max to one side because that costs about the same as the S22 Ultra. But when you look at things like the Pixel 7 Pro, which is currently my Android phone of the year, it all starts to look a bit bad for Samsung. You'll still spend over a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars on this phone. It has to be good. And the fact that it's got a great screen, it's got the S Pen, it's got great battery life in my experience, and it's got a great design isn't enough. And it definitely isn't enough if the performance isn't up to scratch. So what's One UI 4.1 like? As soon as I started using it, it felt okay. And this sounds ridiculous saying this, but bearing in mind that my experience of One UI previously was a very stuttery, laggy thing. Most of that appears to have gone. So scrolling through the home screens now doesn't have those little jumps and jitters that I used to get. Scrolling through the news feed on the left hand side, which was a horrible experience, seems to be better. Twitter was always quite bad. Let's give that a go. Not bad. Again, the scrolling, that was the big issue. The scrolling was really, really jumpy and stop start. Now it just seemed to be much, much smoother. I think Samsung have fixed something here. So after about two days with the S22 Ultra, how do I feel about it now? I'm actually starting to like this phone again, and it's down to that software update, which does seem to have fixed most of the issues. I've made a few observations while I've been using it. The first one is that it feels surprisingly light compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and even the Pixel 7 Pro. It actually feels like quite a light phone, even though technically it's bigger, it's taller and slightly wider than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The fingerprint reader is also slower than it is on the Pixel 7 Pro, which is ironic given that the Pixel 6 Pro wasn't very good in that regard. But I noticed on this, it takes a few too many seconds to register your finger. And also the tap to wake feature, so tapping the screen to wake it up, takes forever on the S22 Ultra. But those are minor gripes. The other thing I've been impressed with actually while I've been using this is the camera. 
Now, as mentioned in my previous review, which I'll link to above, it does quite often get it wrong. It kind of overblows things and does that classic Samsung thing of making everything way too vibrant. But as these shots around here show you, it can do some really good things with images. And in fact, some of these photos are my favorite photos over the last few days. But the other thing I've really enjoyed while I've been away is just little touches. So things like the fact it gives you the local and home time on the always on display. So I've got my local time at home plus the time here in Amsterdam and the always on display compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Again, this is how you do it, Apple. It's so simple. It doesn't really, really have any effect on the battery life. It's great. And on the battery life, it's fantastic. I know a lot of people have had an issue with the S22 Ultra's battery life, but I've never had that problem. So do I recommend the S22 Ultra now in October slash November 2022? No, I'm afraid not Samsung. Even though the Exynos version in the UK does appear to be fixed with this latest update, it's still a very expensive phone. And the thing that has completely changed everything for me is the Pixel 7 Pro. The fact that that phone is so much cheaper, it's still not cheap, but it's cheaper than this and cheaper than this. It just makes the lives of these two phones pretty difficult. So I would give the S22 Ultra a miss. It's just too expensive and it's coming to the end of its life anyway, let's be honest. And instead, if you're in the market for a new Android phone, I would go for either the Pixel 7 or the Pixel 7 Pro. And to find out what I think about those two phones, keep watching for a link to my full review. What a nice morning here. Just look at this. Absolutely beautiful. I love Amsterdam, by the way. Definitely coming back.